Good afternoon, welcome to the island of Nevis. This is Vance Winkworth, uh, International Airport. Van Vance Winkworth Amory International Airport, excuse me. Um, it's a really cool uh, airport that you can get on flightsim.to. I think it looks pretty great. So, uh, first things first, let's set the altimeter here before I forget. We're going to do something kind of cool today. All right, let's turn the fuel on. A rotating beacon on. Mixture is rich. Carb heat is cold. Master switch on. There is no fuel pump. Throttle crack the quarter inch pellet area is clear there goes the starter magneto is back to both let's check the oil pressure oil pressure is looking good at 1200 rpm not too bad let's turn the rest of our lights on um, I have contemplated removing the yoke in this airplane for visibility, but I'm not going to for this flight. So what we're going to do today, uh, I don't think we have any air traffic control, and we do we? TNCF, where is that? TNCF Center, let's see where TNCF Center is. Altimeter is set. Uh, da, 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 da. There is an unlikely airplane to be landing at this airport. That jet right there. So, TNCF Center. Ah, okay, no, that's that's over by. Uh, that's over by Aruba. So anyway. Let's release the parking brake, engage the brakes, to turn our taxi light on, which we already have on. Let's lean the mixture here a little bit. Let's put in 122.8 so we can broadcast on the common traffic advisory frequency. Alright, we'll switch that over. Transponder on uh, altitude. All right. Nevis traffic Cessna four seven five three X ray taxiing to runway one zero via taxiway Alpha Nevis. Uh, I don't know if that's true. What I just said. Be good if it was true. All right. Let's slam on the brakes here. Alright, let me go over and look at me taxiways. Look at me taxiway diagram. This is indeed taxiway alpha, which makes me feel good. I got the runway number right, which makes me feel really good. Um, traffic, there seems to be none. That jet that just landed seems to have disappeared. So, uh, let's see what we got here in terms of a runway. Uh, I'm not familiar. I'm not super familiar with this airport. So, 4,000 feet. We're almost at the end of it. I feel comfortable with making a takeoff here. On course heading is going to be 139. Alright, so. Mixture is rich. Carb heat's cold. There's no fuel pump. Nevis traffic, uh, Cessna 4753 X ray taking runway 10 for departure to the south, Nevis. And uh, looks like we've got some churlish weather here. Uh, I see no traffic on that in that direction. Coming out here, everything's looking good. Alright, Mixture Switch Car Pete's cold. Takeoff power is coming in. Takeoff power is set. 
Engine instruments are in the green. Airspeed is alive. 60, 65, and rotate. And this airplane is ready to fly today. So this is Nevis. It's a really cool airport right on the water. I suppose I should probably stop talking for a split second and pay attention to what I'm doing here. 75 is good for the climb out. Water is moving around today. Uh, all right. I want to get out a little further past these uh, windmills before I make my right turn here. I really feel like hitting. And let's see here. To the north, that is St. Kitts. That is Nevis right there. That little airport, Emory International. Cool island. Really cool island. I like this island. Um, Alright. Uh... Nevis traffic, Cessna 4753 X-ray. Uh, climbing through a thousand feet on a right crosswind departure off runway 10, departing to the south, Nevis. So we are probably going to come to a standstill <laughs> as we make this turn because we are flying into about a 15 not cross, uh, headwind rather. And uh, this is not the world's fastest airplane to begin with, <laughs> as you would know if you know anything about the Cessna 152. It's a cool airplane. I like the Cessna 150, the 150, 152. Either one of them. I like them. Um, let's see, we got our windmills down here. We're generating energy, which is good. Good for the planet. Right? Get us off Russian oil and coal and protect the free peoples of the world, in my opinion. Uh, 2,000 feet. One thing I forgot to do is turn on me landing light. That's okay. I can be forgiven. Uh, what I can't be forgiven is going far in this airplane. So I'm going to level off right here at 2,000 feet. So I haven't told you what my secret is yet. So my secret plan for today, we are looking for a lost airport. Uh, we might not find much anything the way this weather looks right now. Um, let's see what our power setting is here. 2400 is what we want. Um, and uh, I don't I don't know if there is a If there is an available navigational aid on my sorry I still haven't told you what we're doing okay let me focus what we're doing we are going to look for a lost airport on the island of Montserrat which is somewhere 
in this direction. The island of Montserrat, that is. Um, so there are no navigational aids that we can use here to help us get down to Montserrat. So what we're going to do is we're just going to head in this direction. So uh, I was looking at kind of other islands to explore um, and Montserrat is kind of like I feel like it's a little bit overlooked and um so I thought I would do a flight down to Montserrat, but I wasn't thinking a whole lot beyond that. Now, on Montserrat, they have an airport, uh, John A. Osborne International Airport. Sorry, I had a little bit of a uh, of an interruption there. Now, uh, so uh, we are IMC, by the way, which is fine. Um, so John, I believe, O. Osborne International Airport on the island of Montserrat is the current airport, but the former airport was destroyed apparently in an eruption, a volcanic eruption, uh, in 1997. And it was W.H. Bramble Airport, also known as Blackburn Airport. And if you can't tell, I am reading this from Wikipedia right now. Um, but I thought it would be kind of cool to go and see if that airport is, I mean, it's presumably not visible, uh, or like, I don't know, it might, might be, might be there, but I figured I'd go have a look. And so that's what we're doing. Um, so the the current airport Osborne is at the north end of the airport uh, north end of the island rather um, Blackburn Airport was on the eastern side of the island let me see if I can get any I mean, it's kind of crazy if you think about it. Like an entire airport being wiped away. Looks like it was runway 15. And, uh, it's going to be 1533. So. And there's, there's more than one. Uh, 
lost airport, so to speak, in the Caribbean. Um, which is kind of neat. I mean, kind of fun to go check them out, and, and which reminds me, I should turn my pedo heat on being in the being in the clouds here. And if I were doing this right now with VFR, this would be illegal. Yay! Because uh, you have to maintain what airspace this is. This is probably... If I had to venture to guess, I would say this is probably class... I would guess this is probably class... This is class E airspace, apparently. No, it's class E airspace above... Class E airspace above 3,000 feet. I am below 3,000 feet. So I'm technically, I believe, in class G airspace. So my only the only thing I need to do is stay clear of clouds, clear of clouds, and I believe, and I think one statute mile, mile visibility. Uh, I don't have either of those right now, so I would be completely illegal. But it's kind of fun to get some IFR time in. Some basic IFR time. And I think through the clouds. That's not going to be the island of Montserrat. That's going to be another island. That is Redonda. That little rock right there. That belongs to Antigua and Barbuda. as an island or just just a rock if it feels like it, I actually think it's pretty good that we're in the clouds because it hides the fact that we are not going anywhere. I mean, this is literally the slowest flight of my life. We are... going nowhere fast. Thank you. 
I'm gonna put in. I'm gonna pull out a hundred RPM here. And just um, drop down below the level of these clouds. Oil temperature and oil pressure is looking good. Uh, gyro pressure is looking good. Or suction, I guess. Alright. Everything is looking more than satisfactory. So, um, there's a rock. It's gotta be at least somewhat cooler than your average rock because somebody's claiming it. You would kind of figure if it was just a rock and there was nothing like interesting about it in any way that nobody would bother slapping their name on it. Kind of cool. Not a whole lot going on in the Caribbean today. There's one plane from Guadeloupe flying up to St. Martin. There is a plane from St. Martin flying down to somewhere. And what is that? Uh, Brazil, it looks like. Those are both 737s, and there's an, uh, then there's an A321. An A321 squawking 2000, which is BFR squawk. So, that person doesn't really know what they're doing. They're <laughs> 3,100 hours on Matsim, and they are flying. BFR at 40,000 feet in a uh, in an Airbus. That makes sense. Um, probably if I had checked the weather before I left, by the way, uh, I might have rethought this idea. If this were real world. 1017 on the... Uh, QNH here. Uh, because this is clearly not really that great of an idea. Winds 130 at 12. They're really not that great of an idea to be doing BFR in a uh, Cessna 152. Um, these clouds are getting lower. It's kind of almost been one of my gripes about flight simulators that there really hasn't been any weather in the Caribbean, really. Um, it's kind of always the same, but today it's definitely different. traffic at my 12 o'clock, 1,700 feet above me and climbing. P 
torpedo he is on, which is good. This guy's gonna go right over the top of me, about 3,000 feet above me. Fortunately. We may come out of the clouds here. Well, that's actually, I think, that is, oh look, there's both of them. So those, those are two live traffic aircraft. One is Sky 3424, which is this low one right here. And the one way up there is Delta 213. So Sky 3424, Skymark Airlines. Don't know what they are. Don't know what they do. I'm going to pull that 100 RPM back out here. This has been an impromptu IFR flight. And this airplane is IFR capable. And uh, this would be a great time to do a quiz and ask what does it take for an airplane to be IFR capable? I knew this cold about six months ago, five months ago, when I did my IFR check ride. So, what do you need? You need a turn coordinator, which we've got. You need the slip skid indicator, which is the ball, which we've got. You need an airspeed indicator, which we've got. You need an artificial horizon, which we've got. You need a heading indicator. Do you need a heading indicator? Or do you need a magnetic compass? Probably need a heading indicator. You need a clock. A lot of people don't realize that. You need a clock. And it cannot be a, a, a watch on your wrist. You need an in-panel clock like that. Um, you need a vertical speed indicator. You need radios. You need a... You need an electrical system to power those radios. engine gauges, you need an RPM gauge, you need an oil pressure gauge, you need oil pressure and oil temperature, you need fuel gauges, and you need a sensitive altimeter. And I bet you 90 Five percent, probably even more than that. Of uh, whoa, of uh, instrument-rated pilots cannot correctly tell you what a sensitive altimeter is. Get down to about a thousand feet. I would not be comfortable doing this in real life. 
way too close to the water for me for uh, if you had any sort of power problems uh, you're going to be swimming quickly that's no good Asborn traffic, Cessna 4753 X-ray. I'll be uh, flying from north to south past the uh, departure end of runway 10 at 1,000 feet AGL, Osborne. Uh, just in case somebody comes out. I don't think there's going to be any traffic taken off here, but there could be. Uh, a sensitive altimeter. And a lot, of, a lot of pilots will tell you a sensitive altimeter is an altimeter with a Colesman window. And that Colesman window is that, you see the inches of mercury in the millibars that you can adjust to it. it it's essentially an adjustable altimeter. And that's what most pilots will tell you a Colesman window is. And they would be wrong. Um... A sensitive altimeter is an altimeter with 20 foot indications. See this? Uh, there's 9, 20, 40, 60, 80, 1,000, 20, 40, 60, etc. That's what a sensitive altimeter is. Because you can't, if you've got a, a, if you've got minimums on an approach of 900. 37 feet, for example. How can you tell if it's got a, a 900, a 50 foot mark, and a thousand? How can you tell where, reasonably tell where 938 feet is? You can't. And that's why it's got to be 20 foot indications. And I am beginning to get the feeling that our attempt to locate. Blackburn Airport is going to be a failure because that airport is probably underneath this. 500. Yeah, I know. So I am guessing that the airport that we are looking for, as we were told, is no longer available. add back a little bit of power here and you can see us getting blown in in towards the hill right can you tell wait a second looky here what is that Looky here, is that the airport right there? Those kind of look like runway numbers to me. Pretty amazing though. I mean, you can see. I mean, this is this, this is Microsoft Flight Simulator. This is a, a you know a game, essentially. Uh, and you can see quite clearly uh, the devastation that was wrought by this. Uh, by this earthquake. I wouldn't be surprised if that is the airport right there. Uh, 
Huh. Trying to figure out if I can get a little bit better of a of a location on it. Yeah, I think that's what that was. Alright, before I fly into a mountainside here. Pull back the power just a little bit and uh and uh oh no 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 I'm gonna say descend a little bit I wanna say descend like that pull the power back here and have a little bit of a look I mean it's got to be pull the carpet on here I think that's it right here hit the ground looking for it I tend to think that might be it right there I think people do oftentimes when they're doing something like this, looking for something on the ground, not pay attention, they'll either stall or just run into something. You gotta pay attention to your flying at the same time. Or is that it, maybe? Let's see what I mean about writing into something. So, oh well. Alright, let's put the car heat in. Let's go full power here. Get ourselves angled out away from. The, uh. The hill. Well, it was a worthwhile attempt. There's the airport. It was a worthwhile attempt. So... John A. Osborne International Airport is at fifteen is at five hundred feet, excuse me. Five hundred and fifty feet. So what I'm gonna do is level off at fifteen fifty.
and we'll make a. Uh, I mean, if I can get up to 2,000, I'd like to, but I don't really think I can. Runway is runway 1028. <laughs> gonna wind up at 2,000 feet whether I like it or not apparently um, that's more in traffic Cessna 4753 x-ray is on a left downwind for runway 2 uh, runway 10 Osborne all right uh, Pito he is still on roll out on a heading of 280 which is going to put us on a downwind and we are at 2,000 feet so why don't I stop climbing considering they put the controls in front of me for a reason Zero here. Okay. Mm I'm really in any hurry to do that, am I? Weather is one three zero at one two. We're gonna get an update weather right here in a second. Winds aloft. Wow, twenty three knots from zero nine zero. So twenty three knots out of off my tail right now. All right, let's pull on the carp heat. Make a turn here. Osborne traffic, Cessna 4753 X-ray is on a left base, runway 10 Osborne. So I just also put in first notch of flaps. And we get that 10, zero, that 100 zero, zero heading right here on this hash mark, and that's how we know. We are on a perfect left base. Uh, about three miles. It's pretty, huh? I don't see any other traffic then again. How could I? Osborne traffic, Cessna 4753 X ray turning a three mile final runway 10. Osborne. And I am not going to. I'm not going to pull the. I'm not going to put the flaps in yet. Uh, particularly seeing as I have no idea where the runway is. Alright, I see it. the headwind that we have I'm going to be quite comfortable with one notch of flaps here so we got pretty strong headwind And this 
is got my attention here. A right crosswind, periodically anyway. And a hill right before the runway. Osborne traffic, Cessna 4753 X ray, short final runway 10, Osborne. Steady on, lads. One notch of flaps it is. I want to keep the speed up just in case. Carpet's on. Mixture is rich. So I don't want to get in a situation where I want to outclimb this hill and I can't do it. This is not the world's most beautiful approach. Alright, power is out. This is anything other than a 152 into a 12 knot headwind, I would have gone around. But it is a 152 into a 12 knot headwind. And my ground speed is pretty low. Um, my biggest concern My biggest concern, let's put the uh, car pee in here and put the flaps up, lean the mixture a little bit, um, I'll keep my landing light on. My biggest concern on that approach was getting too low and being slow and not having the power to out climb the down drafts. Um, because if you're at 65 knots, which is the normal final approach speed of this airplane I, I came in at 80 knots if you're at 65 knots and you get low and you're looking at the front of a hill you know uh, in front of you yeah you can go full power but what happens if you go full power and you can't out climb the down drafts and so you're pulling the nose up you're already slow you're pulling the nose up, which is going to slow you down even more. And you can't climb. You could be in for for a, for a poor day. And so what I Osborne traffic Cessna the four seven five three X ray is clear the runway Osborne. Um, what I was very consciously doing there was turn off the uh, the landing light here and put on my taxi light what I was very consciously doing was keeping my speed high because speed is energy right and if I needed I'm just going to make a nuisance of myself right here uh, that's a poor place to be. I'll put my nose into the wind. Um, there we come to a stop. Let's pull the mixture. Mixture to idle. Cut off. Let's put on the parking brake. Throttle is idle. Car pee is off. Let's turn our lights off. Let's turn the pedo heat off. Car pee's off. Flaps are up. Mags off. Master and battery switches off. So if you get... Uh, well, so because I had the extra speed, 85 knots, uh, 
if I wanted to, I could just add power and I've got energy. Because speed is energy, right? And... Um... What uh, what that would allow me to do is to is to just add power and go if I needed to, and uh, so I had that option and. Um, while we're here, I want to take a look with the drone camera at John Osborne International Airport. What do you think? So this is a free airport. What am I doing? Sorry if I'm... This is a free airport. Somebody uh, on flightsim.to did this airport. Um, and these little Caribbean airports, I mean, uh, to me, like, you know, there's not a whole lot to do, so they're, they're, they may be somewhat easy, but it's so awesome that some, whoopsie, <laughs> that somebody took the time to, to do this and check this out. I mean, this is like. This is pretty cool. It really is. They did. Look at this. Wow. Look at this. Got the arrival terminal. Uh, we're not going to Tokyo, probably. But, uh... Look at that. I mean, I just think this is really cool. And, uh, and here we are. That's uh, So somebody, uh, I'm going to put this video on, I'm going to put the, uh, the link to this video in, or the link to the scenery in the description of the video so you can get this scenery if you want it. Let's go take a look at the fire department there. It's awesome. And let's go take a look at what I was trying to avoid because this is I mean, this is a pretty serious hill. Right? I mean, look at that. <laughs> yeah. Definitely don't want to come to that in an airplane. And so... I just wanted to keep my power up because the one thing I didn't want to do was be looking at this and be adding power and having the nose come up and just be going straight at this like that. That's what I was trying to avoid. Um... So, really cool look around this airport. Neato. Bravo to whoever did this. Apologize that I don't know who it is. So, that's a uh, little drone camera footage of the airport. And we couldn't find what we were looking for today, but it was fun to try, right? So, hope you guys are doing well.